Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, our next speaker is from the Green Party. He is someone who has been a passionate advocate for change in drug reform for many, many years. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Haig. Inga mana, inga reo, inga iwi o te motu, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, so I'm the Green Party's health spokesperson and um, have a bit of a background in the health sector. Uh, trying, to, trying to understand uh, New Zealand's uh, regulation of drugs, not loud enough, is largely an exercise in what I would call uh, legal paleontology. So rather than a single coherent framework, uh, we instead have a wide variety of different approaches that if, are effectively fossils of the culture and values of the era in which they were developed. And it will be no surprise to you, I think, that the Green Party favours instead the adoption of a single coherent framework, one that's uh, based on um, health rather than justice, one that's based on minimising harm, one that is evidence-based, uh, and one that seeks to regulate uh, drugs, I use the term in the broadest sense, um, in proportion to the risk to health that they pose. So proportionate. It's also crucial to balance our collective responsibility uh, to produce public good by minimising health-related harm with uh, individual autonomy. So when I sat in my friend's lounge the other night and drank um, for gin and tonics, I was taking a step quite deliberately that I knew carried the risk of harm to myself. Um, but I also derived quite a lot of utility um, <laughs> from that action. So there could be some economists in, in the room. Um, and, and, and that's that's the same balancing act, the same calculation that I make when I go mountain biking. And so the New Zealand regulatory framework for, for drugs needs to balance those two things, individual autonomy against the public good. So far, everything I've said uh, has been commonplace, and I could have said it at a conference like this 20 years ago. So there's nothing new in anything that I've said. But in the last, I would say, year, maybe a bit more than a year, there have been three really big, important steps that have totally changed the landscape. And I know you've heard a lot about those things. Um, one is what's been happening internationally and uh, I guess the experience of Uruguay and Colorado and Washington that's, that's the, and others has all been part of that landscape. The second thing is the Psychoactive Substances Act, which puts in place the basics of the kind of framework that I have been talking about. And then the third thing, which I, I think is very important, and I don't know if you've discussed it here today, is the consensus declaration from the conference that the New Zealand Drug Foundation hosted last year. Now, I think what has to happen now is that that consensus statement needs to form the basis um, of the national policy statement. Uh, that's currently being developed. The Psychoactive Substances Act has got to be made to work and to demonstrate harm reduction so that we are able to build on it. And the third thing that I identify is that we need to get drug reform organisations to actually work together uh, to a coherent strategy, which hasn't been happening all that well until now. But meetings like this are a fantastic opportunity to, to build on that. So um, I'm getting the wind up. So opportunity um, is starting to take shape in front of us. It's coalescing really, really fast. Um, and 
uh, those of us who are interested in law reform uh, now need to be able to act quickly to take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you.